Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for another journaling on a budget starting from scratch video. Today we are going to put together our cover so that we know what size our pages need to be. And um, so I am going to make the cover out of the cover of this book. And what I'm going to do is, because we have our fold here, I want to cut it along this line here. I don't want to cut it along my spine line because I don't want this bit of a fold or a weakness along the edge of um, either side of my, my cover. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. And then the first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to cut that off. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm just going to hold my ruler right where I want to cut it and again I don't want that spiny bit on there so I want to check and kind of see where that comes to Let, let's see about turning it over so you can maybe see better now I need to turn it this way because I'm right handed I need to be on this side of my ruler and so there we go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just on the inside there of where that folds over and that's actually where the edge of the cardboard the book board is so I'm going to try and get right to the edge of that book board so I'm only cutting through the foldy part if you can see here this is the edge of the book board, so I want to cut right on the edge of that board, except we're going to do it on this side, where we don't have any writing on the cover. So I'm going to line that up. And then you can cut however you would like to. I prefer to use a razor knife when cutting. Oops, I forgot one thing. We need to put a piece of cardboard under here so that I'm not cutting into my table. If you have an old cutting board, you can do that. And I've just got a cardboard box here. And again, I'm going to cut this with my razor knife. Extend it out a little bit more. I'm just going to cut off the edge of this box. And we are also going to use this box to make our spine. Just any kind of junk cardboard that you have. You can use that. Separate it there and cut the tape. Get this corner loose and cut this tape. I want that bottom flap because I'm going to fold it over so that it's twice as thick. I'm just going to kind of work it so that it will stay folded over. Maybe even, I wonder if I can peel off a little bit of this tape. Mm, not really. We'll see if that little bit on the edge holds. No, it doesn't. So that's what it is. Okay. Now let's open up our book. Put our cardboard underneath. Just trying to have to deal with my tripod over here that holds my phone. Okay, so now I'm going to line up with the board. And be very careful when you're using your razor knife. And if you'd prefer to cut it with your scissors, you can do that. And then I'm just going to run along the edge of my ruler. Oops, it's kind of moving over a bit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to cut down the middle of this folded part, kind of. And then I can come back in 
and use my ruler to make it straight. Then I'm not fighting with the other side of the book. There we go. Okay, now we can get this book out of the way. And here we have some, just a little bit of, um, and I'm not even going to need my ruler because the book board is so thick. I'm just going to come right up against the edge of the book board. Just cut off that little extra bit. We need a little bit more up here. There we go. So now we have what we're going to use for our cover and we need to measure and see what the size is. I'm going to just cut it right in half. So the size of the book is ten and a half inches, so I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter. And I'm going to just use a pencil to mark it. Right at five and a quarter. And come down to the middle. Whenever I cut anything, I always try, whenever I'm making a line, I try and make three marks. That way you know that your line is straight. Sometimes I'm marking it at five and a quarter right now. Sometimes you go to mark it at five and a quarter, you accidentally mark it at five and a half. And then what happens is, if you only have two marks, that half an inch might not be noticeable and you're gonna make a crooked cut. So when you have three marks, when you line those up, if one of them was a mistake, you're definitely going to see that, whoops, that line is out here. I didn't mark it right, and you can remark that. So I'm gonna come right down there, and that's where we're gonna cut. And because we'll do our cover first, that way we will know what size our pages will need to be. You don't have to have a book cover for this, or you can just gut a book and use the cover in its entirety. This book was too big for me to just cut and use the whole thing. I didn't want a journal that big. And the one thing that you're going to need to do is book boarding. The book board is, is very solid board, so you need to make a few cuts. You can't just try and cut through the whole thing all at once because it's just not going to happen. And on this one, we've got the um, the marbled um, color on it. And so, and that is made out of some kind of a, like a vinyl. I'm going to try and stay in the line and see if I need my ruler or not. And again, just take your time and take it slow. Always make sure you're pulling away from yourself. Make sure that you're standing over to the side. So that if you slip, you're not going to cut yourself. Keep your hands out of the way. And just continue cutting through. Now, sometimes you might find it easier just to do like part of it like this and then turn it around and do the rest. I do like to make one long cut instead of going from that end and then turning it around and going from this end because what might happen when you get all the way to the end is that right where they meet together, um, they'll be off just a little bit and they won't line up as nicely. Or, you know, you won't have as smooth of an edge. But if not, if you have an emery board at home, you can just file it down a little bit, trim it with your scissors, trim it with your knife. If you have an area that you're not happy with. And you can fast forward through this part, because it's gonna take a few minutes, but I wanted you to be able to see that it does take a bit of time. I wanted you to see it start to finish. And I'm kind of trying to bend it to see if, you know, to see how much I have to go. And I still have a ways to go. 
I'm going to hold it at the bottom, but making sure that I don't put my thumb over here, anywhere near where the knife is going to come through. And this piece on each side, mostly over here, this is bent over, this vinyl, which is on the cover, and it's bent over, so you're cutting through two thicknesses of that and the book board and the paper, so it's pretty solid right there. And when you're cutting something like this, they're always different. This is really solid, and very possibly it was because this was a school book, and so it was going to be used and opened and closed and propped up, and so they may have used a heavier book board because I usually don't have, it doesn't usually take me quite this long. But this is just gonna, you know, it just shows you. Take your time, you'll get there. Try and get this a little bit deeper because I'm not getting it very well. Okay, and I can feel it starting to bend. Once it really bends well, I can come in from the other side and make the last cut or two. Okay, and I said I don't normally like to turn it around, but I'm gonna have to here because this is very, very solid right here. And for me, it's easier to do it starting at the top and pulling it towards me I have a little more leverage this way than when I get to the bottom. I don't quite have as much leverage down here. And we're really getting close now. Now, I can see a fold there, but I can't tell exactly where I would need to be. But I may try doing it like this, holding it up and seeing if it will cut down for me. And it's not. That vinyl is really, really sturdy. Like I said, fast forward through this part. <laughs> it may make it a whole lot easier to watch. All right, and I think I will just stop it right here, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. That took me another few minutes to get that done. So, and then when I put them up, I noticed that they're a little bit bowed. And so this one, I kind of straightened it out a little bit, and then I thought, oh, I should just show you. Um, if they're a little bit bowed, before you put your spine on and really start putting things together, this is bowed a little bit like this. And so I just am going to just very easily just straighten it back out. Once you get your spine on, that will be very hard to do because your spine is going to be, you know, in the way and they'll all be attached together. So this looks pretty good to me. There might be just a little bow now going the other way, which is totally fine because it's going to relax and it just looks real good. So where I'm going to call that good. Now I have to decide I know where my center is going to be, um, and I need to decide, do I want, I have one finished edge and one cut edge, because remember we cut it off the book. So do I want the cut edge in the front? It will need to be covered with something, um, some washi tape, some fabric, something. Um, so do I want to make that little bit of cover? that's gonna show on the outside in the front or in the back. Do I want my front to look just like this? Or do I want my front to look like this with and probably I would use colored fabric if I use fabric, but or do I want this on my front? I actually think that I want the little bit of added whatever we're gonna to use to cover. I think I'm going to want that on the front. Let's see, it would look like that or it would look like that. 
I think that I want it on the front. It'll give the front a little bit of interest. So I'm going to put my cut board on the front and my board that's going to be completely finished on the back. We do have our two cut sides where we cut it apart here, but that's going to be our spine. That's going to be covered anyways. So this is how we're going to do it. And then I'm going to take the flap off of this box. It's just a regular cardboard box. Move those out of the way for a second. And find my cutting board. Here's my cutting board. And I'm going to use the flat because I know it's got a straight edge here. Um, if it didn't, they wouldn't be able to fold their boxes up as well. So that way I don't have to worry about did I get both edges straight. I only have to worry about one. And right now I am just cutting it off. This is not going to be how thick my spine will be. I just want to make it easier to deal with. Now I have to decide the size of my spine. I know that this side is straight and I'm going to make my spine one and a half inches. I'm going to do two signatures so that gives me three quarters of an inch per signature and I think that that should be pretty pretty good so I'm going to make my spine one and a half or one and three quarters let's do one and three quarters that will give us a little bit more room for bulk when we put some embellishments in there so one and three quarters and one and three quarters and I'm holding my ruler on the side that I know is straight and I just almost marked, marked it at two and a quarter so that definitely would have shown me I was off. Okay, one and three quarters. And I'm going to hold my ruler up to all three lines. And there we go. And I'm not going to draw a line on there because I'm going to cut it anyway, so I'm just going to cut it right along the edge of my ruler. I may have dulled my blade cutting the book. I probably should change it. Okay, so this is the part that we're going to be using. And now we need to make it the same length as our front and back cover. So what I'm going to do is, I've got a little bit of a wrinkle down here, so I'm going to cut that part off. I'm going to hold it to the top of my book. Okay, and now I'm going to mark it. I want to make sure that I'm straight, so I really should line corner to corner up at the top, the corner of our board up to the corner of our book. Make sure that it's straight all the way down because you don't want to cut this crooked. That one I'm going to put a line on because I don't want to cut against my book. I don't want to um, accidentally cut my cover. And I'm going to cut just inside the pencil line because the pencil line was on the outside of our cover. There we go. Now we have our spine. out of the way. Let's see if this works. See I decided the double cuts are going to be on the front. Just lining it all up. I'm going to turn this over so it's easier to see. Now to me this is very important 
So do make sure that you do, you know, check it out really well. I need to take just, just the smallest amount off the top, just a sliver, because it's a little bit longer than my book. So I'm just going to put that on there. Okay, so that's good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put it together so that it will be able to be opened and closed and we're not going to have to worry about it. And so what I did was I pulled out a piece of tea dyed fabric. Now, we, we coffee dyed and color dyed fabric. Um, this is going to be covered up, so I don't want to use any of our colored fabric. And my coffee fabric wasn't quite wide enough. But I did go ahead and I saved my tea bags. I only make one cup of tea out of a tea bag. Um... And so I saved my tea bags until I had three or four of them. And then I made a nice hot cup of tea and I tea stained some paper and some fabric. And the reason that I did that was because I personally prefer tea dyed to coffee dyed. The coffee dyed, especially the fabric, to me, it was a little bit too dingy for me. And so what I'm going to do is I want to see how wide this is. I had already checked it once, but okay, so it's two just over two and a half inches wide. Or actually, it's gonna be just over five inches wide. Yep, it's five and three quarters. So if I rip it in half, it's gonna be just over two and a half inches. Our spine is one and three quarters. So I think that's gonna give us enough. We're gonna find out because I wanna put a piece on the inside and the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this up on here I'm going to put my book right up to my spine with a little gap. Put the other side right up to the spine with just a little gap, about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to put this on here and see if I feel like I have enough on each side. So the half width of this is going to be... That's going to come out on my book almost a half an inch. and then it's gonna be covered with paper. So I'm gonna say that that's going to work. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it in half. And I know that this is straight because I ripped both edges of it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it in half and give it a little cut right in the center and then rip it because fabric has a weave to it so if you just give it a little cut and rip it, it will rip straight. So long as you're going like with the grain, I guess you would call it. And I'm gonna leave this stick up over the edge of our book a little bit and down across the bottom a little bit. And so I'm gonna put it up about a half an inch above our cover and just give it a cut down here about a half an inch. We can always trim this later if we don't like how far it sticks out. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got the piece that we want for there. And let's see about... And actually, this piece is going to be long enough to do the other side. So I could have cut it a little bit wider had I paid attention to that. Um, I was thinking I needed the two separate pieces and that's why I folded it in half. But I could have made this a little wider because it's enough for both sides. So something for you to think about when you're doing it. Now we're going to glue it down with tacky glue. But I have to grab it really quick. And 
and the tacky glue is going to hold it nice and solid. Now, I'm going to put my shorter piece on the inside because normally when I trim it, if I don't like how long it is, it's normally the inside that I trim a little bit shorter than the outside. And what I'm going to do first thing is I'm going to get glue all over my spine and and you really want it all over your spine and you don't want it super thin. You don't want it as thick as this all over and you want it to be, you want to spread it out to make sure that there is glue across the whole thing. You don't want that fabric to lift up at all. The fabric is what's going to make it make your hinge nice and solid because the fabric is going to not not rip. Sometimes when you fold paper over and over and over then it may rip a little bit. But fabric doesn't do that. And so then what I want to do let's move these for just a second. I'm going to lay my fabric down and I'm going to take my spine and I'm going to center it so that I have the same amount on each side. I want to pull it down just a little bit. Make sure that you get it pretty straight. And then give it a good press, flip it over, and give it another really good press. Now this one you'll have to press like this because that glue is coming through the fabric and that's not gonna hurt a thing. It's gonna make your fabric stiff, which is exactly what you want. And then we're going to put glue down the edge of this one. And this is our back side because it has the, the finished edge on it. We are going to cover this at some point, so it's okay if your glue goes out a little bit far. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this back over again. And I'm going to line it up on here about an eighth of an inch. We just want just the smallest of a gap so that your book doesn't bind up as you open and close it. So we've got a little gap there. I'm going to turn it over, give this a good press. It folds nicely. I'll do the same thing on this one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside and let this glue dry. And then we'll flip it over and put the other side on. So again, I'm going to flip this over this way and flip this over this way. Most importantly, lining it up at the top and the bottom. With just the slightest of a gap. Making sure it's lined up, give it a press. And then I'm grabbing the fabric to just get it lifted a little bit and flip that over. something on my table here. There we go. All right, give that a press. All right, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and this is pretty good and dry. You do want this to be pretty dry um, so that, hold on a minute, I turned my light off. Let me turn it back on. That's better. Um, because of what we're going to do the next step. So for the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over and we are going to put glue on our centerpiece. But I did go ahead and I did have another piece of tea dyed that was a little bit thicker than the original one because this was not quite thick enough. So in order to do this one and three quarter inch spine, what I do with my ruler This piece of fabric is 
almost three and a half inches. So that's about double the width of your spine because you definitely want to make sure that it's on there good and solid. And this is going this side takes up more fabric than the other side does. The other side had enough on there with what we'll be doing, but this one, because we're gonna fold this. So first just the center of the spine. And then we'll just line this up with the top. And I just cut it to the same length of the other one. Make sure it's about centered. And again, you're going to need to pat because the glue comes through and if you rub it, it just makes the fabric crinkle and move. So there we go. Now what we're going to do next, and this is why you want the other side to be dry, is because now we're going to do this. We're going to fold our book up like this because what's going to happen is if we were to glue this down flat, when we went to bend this book, it would just put such a tension on this fabric, it would eventually loosen up or let go. Whereas on the inside, when you fold it up, there's no tension because it's just folding into itself. So what we need to do here to make sure... And first I'm going to just go in and we're going to have to put something on the spine. So again, we're not super worried about if we get a little bit of the glue past the fabric. We definitely want to make sure that we have good contact here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it up. And I'm also going to put a little bit of glue along the spines. That doesn't need to be a whole lot, but this is right on the edge of the cardboard and the edge of the book board. And then I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to press that into that corner. Keeping it as straight as you can. Like that. And then fold this over the edge. Like so. So now if I were to flatten it out so that I can press this down. Now, some people don't like to make it this, this loose because this will make a loose cover. I like a loose cover um, because I like it to be able to do whatever it needs to do once I start putting all the embellishments in. And so this is how I do it most of the time when I make a three-piece cover is I put that in there just like that. So you can see when you fold it up, it meets itself. Um, but... You can't let it dry like this because what will happen is that very possibly could glue itself together. So as soon as we're done, we'll want to stand it up, put something underneath it to hold it solid, and then again, let it dry. So we're going to do the other side. And again, I do put it on here when it's flat just because it's easier. making sure that I get glue all over where my fabric's going to be. And then I'm going to fold it up and put a little bit of glue on the edges of the book board and on the edges of the cardboard. And again, spread that out. You don't want a big glob of glue that's just going to have you know soak it all soaks through the fabric but you don't want a whole great big bunch of it soaking through I'm gonna get it right there on the edge and now I'm going to push it up against the side and against the book board And 
And if you don't want to do this part, you can just wrap it over, but you still want to wrap it this way with your book in this position so that it, it has enough to be able to close. And there we go. And then you want to make sure that your fabric is nice and flat. And I have a big enough gap here that it's not touching. I'm going to take my scissors, just the back part of them, but only I think only one piece will fit in there. Just kind of give that a press. They're not really fitting in there very well. I'm going to come over to this side. This side has a much smaller gap. I just want to give that glue a little bit of a chance to catch. And I'm going to set it like this. And then find something to sit underneath of it. Even my glue bottle will work. I'm going to put a glue bottle on this side. And a hand sanitizer bottle on the other. Just to hold that up nice and straight. And then I will go ahead and come in and just kind of touch this up like this a little bit as it's drying. Just to make sure that it dries the way that I want it to. And now we're going to let this sit and let it dry. And then our cover will be done. And I'll be back to show you how it looks when it's all dry. Okay, I'm back and our book is nice and dry. And so now this is what our spine looks like. Now we're not going to cover the spine till towards the end. Um, because I never know exactly what I want to do with it. And it's easier to deal with a nice really flat surface versus having a spine. Because um, I think that I will probably do a... Um, a tea glue spine with a paper towel holder. So if you um, don't have a paper towel roll, um, save one between now and the next. It'll be a long time. Um, and then save, if you drink tea, save some of your tea leaves. And if you don't drink tea, some of your coffee grounds will work also. So, and if you don't drink either one, ask somebody who drinks tea or coffee if you can have a little bit of theirs tea preferably. Um, and so we've got our book. It lays nice and flat. And then all we need to do now is just to choose um, our signatures. I'm going to put two signatures in this book, um, four pages each. So what I've done is um, I made some folders to hold my different things. Of course, this one I've been digging through, but I'll just show you. Um, this is just all of my fabrics. And so I went ahead and after I dyed them, these are my tea dyed here and these are my coffee dyed over here. And then the original um, colored fabric that we made is on the bottom. So we have those, set those aside because we don't need those right now. And then pull out my other two folders that I made. And these are just cereal boxes. So, you know, that just works out perfect just cut off the bottom, the top, and one of the sides, and you've got a folder. So you don't have to go buy folders to keep things in, but for me, I like to store things where 
I can keep them more so my papers aren't getting as tattered. So we'll start out with our colored papers. And here we have, um, these are the ones that when we painted our fabrics and our ribbon that we painted um, on. And I really like this. And with the color of our cover, these will be great to go. <laughs> Same colors as what we have in our fibers too. So I'm going to put um, one of these in each of our signatures. And then these are just half pages, so we can use those for decorating. Now these ones are only colored really mostly on one side, so I don't think I'm gonna use those. And these don't really match. We can always make more of these later. Um, maybe one more with the blue and maybe like green and yellow because I don't like the colors of any of those. So I'm not going to put any of those in there. We've got two colored pages. And then I told you that I made some tea dyed. So this is my coffee dyed papers. And these are my tea dyed papers. And I just wanted to kind of show you. And I don't know if the if it really shows up much on here. These are a little more in the brownie gray tones and these are the brownie warm tones, or this is kind of cool and this is kind of warm. Um, you know, to me, the tea dyed just is just a little bit more, um, has more of a yellow hue to it. it. It's not really yellow, but I'm, you know, I don't know how to explain it. But the coffee is a lot darker and a lot grungier where the tea seems to be a little bit smoother, even though I like texture on it, I don't really like the the parts that look dirty. And so we've got these um, from our tea dyed. And I think what we'll do is we will put in one coffee dyed, and I'm just gonna do regular. Now this one has a real bad corner, so we won't choose that one, since we have quite a few here. And I didn't put a lot of texture in them when I dyed them. So I like this one. This one looks really nice. This is the one where the lace was across the top. So there's one regular coffee. And then I'm going to choose this one. And I like the, the patterning on this one a little better but right now it's so um, wrinkled that I would prefer for my actual pages to have them a little flatter. So now we have two pages for each signature and then let's go to our tea dyed and we're just going to choose. I like the the darker color. They kind of came out one a little darker than the other from leaving them sit a little longer. So we'll choose two that are like that. This one is gorgeous. That's just beautiful. And then we will put in two of our shorthand pages. So if I fold that in half, that, one, that one's got quite, I want some with quite a bit of shorthand on them. Although, and here we've got this one that is, um, would be full shorthand on a page like that, which I might want to kind of just decorate around it. That's nice. And then we'll be covering up. You cover up so much of it, so I'm going to take two of them that have a full side of shorthand. Let me take this one back out. So that maybe we can leave one page kind of with that there. Oh, and I've also got two that I had already that were folded when they were drying, but we have enough. So we're going to leave it at that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need to find out how large our pages need to be. So I'm going to stand my um, spine up and measure it from the spine out. From the spine to the edge of our paper here, it's approximately, it's five and one eighths inch. So if I do five inches, then I know that I'll be inside the book. And I do like to be inside the book um, going across. And then from top to bottom, it is eight and a quarter. So I'm going to make it eight inches by five inches, or actually eight inches by ten inches because it will need to be folded in half. And these pages. 
are almost eight inches. by 10 and a half. So I am just going to, I'm gonna take off just a little bit. Let's see, yeah, five inches is what we were gonna have. So I'm gonna take off just a little bit of this. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. You can measure it if you want to. Whoops, and then I slipped, that's not good. And you can cut it if you want to, however you'd like to do. Okay, so there are those two pages. And they're going to, we're going to check them in our book to make sure that they fit well. So we have our spine here. They fit up and down very nicely. And they fit coming out this way very nicely. So there we go. Those, those will work well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of stack these up. And I want them all to be about the same size, so I'm just going to put this on here. I'm going to put a mark at the top of that page and at the bottom. Then I'm going to put my, line them up nicely, hold my ruler down nice and tight, just like that, and now make sure that you hold it nice and tight, and then just kind of tear it and angle up against your ruler. And because I'm holding here really tight, I slipped a little bit on this end. I pulled the page out just a little bit, so I'm just gonna line it back up and make sure that I hold it down here now. There we go. And I'm gonna do that again. If I would have held it better, I could have done all four without having to remark it. But since I picked everything up, I don't want it to get too unaligned. Okay, so make sure I hold it down nice and tight here at this end where I'm starting. Go about halfway and then move down and hold it really tight at this end. There we go. I'm going to move back up here and hold it down nice and tight. To me, this is just a little bit faster than having to cut them, and I do like the ripped edge. Okay, so now all of our pages like that. There's the other. There are those. And then height-wise, that was our height. Now we need to do our width. And for the width, I'm just going to line them all up and cut them all at the same time. And that's more for the speed of the video than... We want them all to be as wide as this. Now we're going to have to cut these pages when we fold them in half. And I have to find my scissors. All right, I'll be right back. I can't find my scissors. Okay, I found my scissors right underneath the cover where I left them. Okay, 
So now we know that this is the size that we want our papers to be. I did um, go ahead and rip the top off of our colored paper so that they were all the same height. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my signatures together before I cut my width. For, for a reason. Because I was going to just cut the end off so I could fold them in half to be the same length as this. But if I had done that and I had cut the ones that had been folded, the colors had both already been folded, I would have cut it right here. It would have needed to bend right here. And I already had a fold over here and I would have had to fold it here. So I want to go ahead and just put them together and then I'm going, because we're going to have to trim them all down anyways, because whenever you fold a paper and you put it, let's do it with all of these that are the same length. Are these the same length? Let's see. Yes, all of these are the same length. So we're going to go a colored page, a coffee page. A tea page, and a shorthand page. I'm going to put the shorthand between the coffee and the tea, just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so when you look at these, as you fold them and put them in together, they start working their way out. So the one here, by the time you get to the middle, you've got a difference. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go in. I have to decide if I mind that that... I want them all to be this length. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to throw this one on the outside. Just because that's, that's the size that I want it. We're going to use our cutting mat. And... Our razor knife. Gonna make sure that they're all nice and tight together. Hold this up to the page that I want all of them to be that size, and then I'm just going to cut them all to be that size. And I didn't do real good up here, so I just go back in and trim that up. Now you could also do that with your scissors. There we go. Now all of our pages are all the same width. And we're going to do it with these ones too. I got our colored page. I'm going to leave this one on the outside. And our coffee and our tea dyed. And they don't, both signatures don't have to be the same. Both signatures don't have to be in the same order. You just do it however you think it looks good to you. But you do want to put them in the order you want them. Um, when you put them together. So I'm going to go blue. And this one I'm going to go tea dyed. Then this one. And then this one. You want them in the correct order because if you switch them around after you cut them, then if this one, I don't know how to say it. If you were to take this one and put it in the middle, well, let's do that. If you were to take this one and put it in the middle after you've already cut them all to the same size, because you have all those pages layering up on each other, it's too big. See? So you want them in the correct order before you cut them. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use this as my guide because I know that's how big I want my pages to be. I don't want to take the one out of the middle of here because then I don't want to have to put it back and have my other pages be out of order. Make sure that you snug them all up. edge there and then just trim right up against your ruler and there we go put this one back in here where it belongs okay 
Okay. And don't forget to keep these bits because these would be nice to weave. They would be nice, nice to put little sentiments on. So now these bits I'm not going to keep, but these bits I am because we can use those later on in other, in other things for our book. Let's move this all out of the way. So now we are going to have two signatures in our book. We've got lots of room there. And yet, just the way they are now, they do fill it up nicely. So we're going to have room. They can really be squishy. So we will have room to put things in there, but they're not going to be like putting one signature in this side spine. You would really have to fill that out and it would it just wouldn't work as well even if I put all of those pages in just one signature it would just be so fat and then just only hooking in one spot so we're we've got our two signatures and they're going to fit in there nicely now I am going to sew these in at the end we'll do a three hole pamphlet stitch and but I'm not going to do that till very close to the end because I like to take my pages apart and put them back together and if you're afraid that you might get them out of order, you can take your pencil, especially if all your pages are very close to the same color or something, and just down in the corner, just number them. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we don't need to keep numbering because that's the other half of these pages. And then here we're going to, so that we get the right ones together, five, six, seven, and eight. And then if we don't cover those up, we can always erase them being that we put them on there in pencil. And that way if we take them apart and we're taking them apart and putting them back together, we'll know which ones are which until we start covering the numbers up. So there we go. That is today's video, and I hope that this helps. Now remember, you can just go ahead and take a regular book and just cut along both sides of the spine to pull the center out and then you would just have that whole book as your cover including its own spine i didn't have one for this project so we did ours this way and also because um like i could have made my spine out of this but this is so hard that trying to get a hole through this is difficult now with a drill or something like that it's not that difficult but we don't have a drill so we have cardboard and we have fabric it's nice, it's sturdy, but we will be able to get our holes through it when the time comes. And that's why I did not use this as my spine. So, or, like you have a box. And so here is a box, and you could say, well, I want, I want to make a journal this size. And then you've got, and then you could just have your spine. Let me just show you real quickly. So if you say that's the front of your cover, then you have your spine, then you would fold it wherever you wanted to fold it, and then cut it off here, the same width as this, and now you would have a journal, that size right there, made out of this box, and it's all connected. So you don't have to do it in the three pieces like I did. I only did it, I only added the spine separately so that I would be able to use this as my cover. So, and um, so there we go. That is our journal cover. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and we will be back next time to do some embellishing, to make some embellishments. We're not ready to really embellish the book yet, but we need to make some things to go inside here. So we'll start that next week. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.